Hi, I'm Robin. And I'm Bill. Welcome to Not the Retirement Show. Today we're chatting about why you really need to check on your retirement plan regularly. Bill, why isn't retirement planning a set it and forget it kind of situation? Because things change. Life changes, finances change, circumstances change. You may move house, you may move jobs. Uh, you may have come across unexpected expenses which have caused a hit to your uh, savings, to your retirement fund, if, if that's what you call it. Uh, there are any number of things that can change that will impact, in some cases, severely impact that plan that you have for your own retirement. Okay, so that makes very obvious sense to me. Bill, in your mind, why is it that we all seem to still think that the retirement plan is just going to take care of itself. Because I think, and I don't have statistics on this, I, I will be honest, but I think what happens is that if you're employed, you know, you've got an employer and you've got a company pension fund, I think what happens is that uh, at some point, and this is usually a one-time occurrence, that you sit with your HR people, perhaps, or your pension administrator, and they will say to you, uh, okay, what kind of, uh, you know, fund would you like to be in? What's Do, your risk tolerance? The risk tolerance, high risk, low risk, etc. So, so you sort of go, mm, well, I would like to do this. And hopefully you're taking into account your age at that time, uh, how many years you've got to go before you would be taking uh, retirement, and you reach a, a decision. You, you you conclude that this type of fund, mutual fund typically, would be the, the one that you want. And I think what happens is that people sort of go, okay, you've done that, move on. Well, I think maybe you're right about that. I never really thought about it that way. But, you know, what does happen? You sign up for the company pension plan. You know you're going to have to make mandatory government contributions. And what do you do when you get your uh, pay stub or your statement, however that is, at the end of the month? What do you do? You check to see if all the deductions are correct. If you're conscientious, some people don't even do that much. And as long as you see, yep, that deduction went, that deduction when you think you're done you know it never really occurs to you that markets rise and fall that uh, mutual funds uh, be, go in and out of popularity that situations change and that maybe you need to change uh, in my mind there's another really big one okay so if you are on the younger end of things you know somewhere between say 22 and 35 you've signed up for these deductions and in your mind, your future life is so far away that it's almost in some cases annoying that they're taking what you see as your money away from you. And you don't really think about, you know, hey, I'm going to need that some point in the future. And as you age, you also don't think about the fact that inflation is rampant. I mean, particularly now, has anybody looked at the cost of a price of a loaf of bread? And you really don't think, oh, I need to find a way to increase the amount that I am contributing to my company pension plan and not just give the minimum amount that I signed up four years ago. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think the age factor is, is, a, is an important aspect of this because, yeah, you're right. I mean, age 22 to 35, you, you use you know, trying to get people's attention to see, have you thought about your retirement plan? I mean, there's no chance. They I mean, look at you like you're a crazy they, person. They just ain't going to do that. We understand that. But once you go over, you know, 35, 40, 45. 50, it, 55. Right. If, you still, if you're still in that mindset, then you're cheating yourself. Um, you're not cheating anybody else. You're cheating yourself. And if you're stuck in the groove of, well, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. You're going to have a rude awakening. And what will happen, um, this is not a prediction, this is a fact. What will happen is that if you trundle along and trundle along, you get to maybe like age 60, let's say. There's no magic to that, that number, but you get to age 60 and you go, oh, wait a minute, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Um, you know, I wonder what my income will be in retirement. 
And you've no idea. You've no idea. But what happens is you say, oh, maybe I should think about this. Maybe I should have a look at this. And then, duh, all of a sudden you think, oh, oh, I've only got five years left to fix or correct or, re, you know, recalibrate my retirement fund in order to produce the income that I need. In other words, you're going to look at your lifestyle that you want in retirement. You're going to figure out if you can afford it. Um, and you, you're then going to say, well, will I have the income uh, sufficiently enough to be able to live that lifestyle? But if you've only got literally five years left, and I'm, I'm just using simple arithmetic here, but you know, if you've only got a short period of time to fix that retirement fund and the income coming from that retirement fund, you're not giving yourself anything. You've, well, you, you've literally just gone through the last 10, 15, 20 years prior to that where you've just said, well, you know, it'll be okay. No, it won't. It won't. It won't be okay. Simple fact. If you don't have roughly 70, maybe 75% of your pre-retirement income, the income that you're, you're getting while you're still employed, if you don't have 75% of that number in retirement, you're giving yourself a problem. Well, I have to agree with you. I'm going to be a tad more optimistic than Bill just was. Of course, he's being realistic when everything that he says. But I'm going to say, you know, as long as you're watching this video today, whether you have a few years left till retirement or a few more, hopefully a few more, yes, you can do things to fix your situation, to improve your circumstances. But the less you've paid attention to things up to now, the bigger the mountain is that you're going to have to climb to significantly improve the quality of your life in retirement. Can we find ways to live on practically no money? Well, particularly in North America or some of the third world countries, of course you can. But is that really the life that you want for yourself? Or do you want to have more freedom, more choices? Because really, how well you attend to these things directly affects how much freedom you have in your later life, how many choices you can make in your later life. Well, if you're still listening, we must have said something helpful or insightful. So please subscribe to our channel and we'll chat with you again soon.